Hi, Hans Lemerson here, and today I'm going to show you dual read memory. This is a, a cell of random access memory, or RAM, which has two output controls on it. This is the memory that I'm using for my CPU over there. Uh, this is the basic unit, which get which I copied and paste, which I repeated 120 times there. There are 15 registers. Okay, the the basic principle is, well, I mean, you start off with the D flip flop. That's this thing over here, and you have the green input line, and it powers that repeater there. And when this when this line goes on, the piston goes down. And when it comes up again, the value on this line is written to memory. Then the the wire yeah, the, the signal goes up this wire and then up these torch stacks because uh, it starts getting really cramped here. It seems it seems like you have a lot of space until you realize you have to uh, pack them all next to each other and then things start getting cramped. So it goes up this torch stack, and these output lines, when that's high, the piston extends, and when the piston extends, it's above a torch, and the signal goes to this line. And so that's one output, and that's the other output. And so you can read, you can read from a cell in, in two different places and they don't interfere with each other at all. This means that uh, for my CPU here, I can choose an address, I can choose one address to read from for B, one address to read from for A, and these both of these happen at the same time. B reads its stuff, and A reads its stuff. Yeah, when they're stacked like this, you can see it's a bit, it's a bit more involved and cramped. I would have liked to have done, uh, to have avoided using a torch stack because that adds delay, and instead instead used a, a spiral staircase for the wiring. But I tested it a bunch, and it doesn't actually work. You can't, you can't fit a spiral amid this huge crisscross of wires. It doesn't work. It works for a little bit, then you run into issues where it connects when, when you don't want it to. So, as you can see, uh, the A address has select, or the, yeah, the address control for input A has selected, uh, has selected register 1. And so these upper pistons are in position to deliver the data. Whereas, uh, whereas register two, uh, right here, was selected, it is the one that input B selected, or that's selected for the B input. And these pistons are extended into reading position. So, that is an overview of how this is, of how the dual read RAM uh, works in my CPU. And I, it's quite useful. The only disadvantage is that the cells are really big. This is not compact. The footprint is four by four. It's, that's pretty sizable. I've managed to compress RAM down to a 2x2 two two footprint, and it's even shorter than this. So this is about five times larger than it needs to be. But for the functionality it gives, eh, maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Some other people have managed to make dual read RAM that is actually more compact than this. But it's longer in this dimension, 
and this dimension is the one that impacts the speed of your memory system because it determines how often you have to place a repeater. As you may notice, you can actually stack as many layers of this up as you want. There's there's no limit to how many outputs can come that can there's no limit to how many outputs can come off of this memory. It's quite useful that way. So what I plan on doing is actually uh, for what for one of these registers, just continuing a torch stack up. like that and then using this as as the input for a display for my computer and there's plenty of room here that I could put a display up here a nice seven segment display kind of like that but over here that, that could work yeah that could work okay uh, I may at some point do a separate video where I show how to build this but for now, I'll just give you a, a nice view of how it's constructed, a view of its arrangement. The key to making, uh, to making RAM is to figure out how all the different wires are going to connect up when it's, arra when it's arranged in a repeating cell, cell structure. This connects to this of the next, of the next set. In the next cell, this connects to this. So every horizontal line becomes a wire, a continuous long wire. And the output control here represents the intersection of three different wires, or the interaction of three different wires. One going to the side, one going forwards, one going up. And yeah, that that's why the wiring gets so complicated, because you can't you need all three dimensions. You have to use all three dimensions. Okay, so that's my dual read RAM. Hans Lemerson, signing out.